Hi guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to digitize your sketches and then bring it over into a sort of Photoshop lesson on how to optimize how your sketches look um, in their digital format. So um, obviously this is very important for us this semester, but it's going to be very important for you um, moving forward. Uh, in this day and age, most designers are required uh, to have digital portfolios. Um, it would be, you know, kind of very old-fashioned to not have your sketches digitized. And when we do that, we don't want to lose anything. And ideally, what we want to do is make them look even better, present them even nicer and cleaner than even they do in real life. So um, it's pretty easy, but um, I'm going to go over just some, some quick things um, to think about when you are digitizing your sketches. First is the best way to digitize your sketches is with a good quality scanner. Um, it's easy, it gives you a great image, it's perfectly flat, you don't have to worry about all the sort of intricacies of photography and capturing the right image. Um, so if you have access to a good scanner, um, use that. Sometimes a lot of uh, FedEx places will have copier scanners that you can use. You can go there and do that. Um, and they're not terribly expensive, so if you have a little bit of extra money, um, investing in a good quality scanner will definitely help you ease uh, the transition from a physical portfolio to a digital portfolio. So very, very easy to use and gives great uh, quality digitized images every single time. It really takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to focus, you don't have to worry about lighting, you don't have to worry about holding your hand still or setting up a tripod. You just throw it in, scan it, and you get the perfect digitization of your image every time. If you do not have access to a scanner, you will have to take images of your sketches and upload them to a computer. So um, use the best quality camera that you have access to. Uh, many cell phone cameras are very good these days. Um, and I know a lot of you are using your cell phone to capture images of your work, so that's perfectly fine. Um, you can go ahead and still do that. Um, but again, if you do have access, uh, access to a high quality camera, um, they're always gonna give you a better image. Um, however, some of them can be kind of a little bit more complicated to use, and some of them don't really have great autofocus ones. So, um, if you don't really want to pick up a hobby of, of learning photography, you can probably stick to your cell phone camera. Um, but again, just try to use the uh, camera with the best quality because, again, you want the uh, highest resolution images possible. So once you've selected your camera and you're ready to start setting up your pictures, um, I see a lot of sort of mistakes being made with a lot of the images. Um, and they're really just sort of minor ones and they're really, really easy to fix. So first is lighting. Um, and we can solve a little bit of this in Photoshop as I'll show you when we move to sort of the Photoshop aspect of once the uh, images have been captured, what we can do to sort of uh, bump up their quality and, and fix them. Um, but all in all, you want to start with the best image possible. It's going to make everything afterwards a little bit easier. So when you're photographing your sketches, make sure they are well lit. Um, so this means nice bright light shining on it. You don't want dark images. Uh, you don't want it to seem dim. You want it really nice and bright. Uh, and there's a few reasons for this. Obviously, dimmer um, sketches are just a little bit dull, but light will help bring out the colors and make it bright and, and really easy to see and um, let your colors be very brilliant. And luckily for us, one of the best sources of light is actually sunlight. Um, it is very, very rich. It allows colors to shine very, very brightly. So um, <clears throat> because the sun has this, it's what's called full spectrum. Um, it's a very rich light, uh, much more richer than a lot of our bulbs and things like that. Um, we get really, really rich colors when lighting things with sunlight. Um, you've probably noticed this on a bright sunny day, everything outside seems a little bit more colorful, um, a little bit richer, and that is because, of course, of the, you know, the, the beautiful quality of light that the sun gives us. Um, and it's also super free, so <laughs> always a good one. The trick is with sunlight is to make sure that there's no shadows on it, and really with any light, 
Um, make sure that there's no shadows or sort of differing variants of light on it. You want a nice, clean, even light. You don't want any parts a little bit darker, any parts a little bit brighter. You want it to be nice and even all the way across. So if you have a nice, you know, white wall uh, set up a, uh, across from a sunny window, that may be an excellent place to take your uh, photographs. If not, use whatever lights you have in the uh, home. If you need to bring in a couple lamps and shine them at them, um, do what you can to make sure it's nice and bright and well lit. The next is how we set up our photography. And this is actually one of the most common um, sort of things that I see in students taking pictures of their work is they're not properly lined up with the camera. Um, and when the camera can be a little bit tilted or skewed or it's not perfectly parallel, so you want like a perfect perpendicular line coming up, keeping the camera flat and parallel to the image, um, you get this sort of angled or skewed image um, and it just doesn't look good. It, it skews the proportions, it, it automatically makes your image look not so great. Um, so how do we avoid this? Well, there's pretty easy ways to avoid this. One, just be a little bit more careful when you're taking your pictures, of course, make sure that camera is lined up. Um, but if you really want to make sure that you're getting it absolutely perfect, what I'm gonna recommend is putting your pictures on a wall and not photographing them flat like this. So when you photograph them flat, flat like this, especially with a cell phone, the angle of the cell phone a lot of times goes like this and you snap it and then it's this whole thing is now at an angle and it's skewed and you get these terrible proportions. Um, when it's upright like this, it's a lot easier for you to hold the camera properly um, and sort of see what's going on with the image right here. So if it's skewed, um, you know, adjust your camera. So how do you know if it's skewed? So see how the lines of this portrait are parallel with the lines of the frame? That's what you want to look for. When it's skewed, they'll start to angle in and sort of angle away. You want to avoid that in either direction. So this would be, it would be skewed um, one way, and if it was like this, it'd be skewed another way. So you want to keep these lines parallel to the edge of your frame. Um, and again, uh, keeping your hands steady um, is really important because any sort of little jiggling or motion will cause a little bit of blur and a little bit of um, less quality of the image. Now, our cameras are so good today, a lot of them have, you know, um, anti-blur or, you know, motion photography. So, um, you know, if you do have shaky hands, that can help you out. If not, you can get a tripod. Tripod is, is a fantastic way to keep your camera in the right position still. Um, so you get that perfect image every time. If you don't have it, again, just look for these lines, hold it very still, take a few deep breaths and then hold your breath and then snap the picture because your breathing makes you move. So if you hold your breath for a few moments while you actually take the uh, picture, you'll be a bit stiller. So um, that'll kind of conclude what we have for just generally taking the pictures. And again, they're just quick tips, but again, we wanna make sure that everything um, that we work so hard on on our sketches gets transferred into the digital images and sort of just making sure of these few things, you know, making sure that um, your camera's lined up, it's well lit, or again, using a scanner, again, using the scanner takes out all the sort of tough stuff. Um, it's really, really well done. Um, and once we have those digital images, it's time for us to go ahead and um, use Photoshop or another um, photo editing software to sort of perfect them, crop them down, uh, make sure they're looking really good, and potentially arrange them on our sort of final version. So I'm going to come back um, with some images that I've taken, and we're going to put them in Photoshop and optimize them for presentation. Okay. Hi guys. Okay. So now that we've taken images of a sketch, so I did a quick little sort of reference sketch. Um, and I just wanted to show you, sort of to go back to our previous, um, how to take the images. So I have three here, one is sort of the wrong way, but I just wanted to show you the difference between scan and photograph. So this is photograph, this was photographed with a cell phone, 
um, in full sunlight, um, you know, on a wall, you know, kind of, you know, using correct technique. Um, and this was a scan. So you can see it's much brighter, there's much more detail, it's flat. Um, so again, just to reiterate and to sort of show the example that, um, you know, uh, using a scan bed is, is probably the best way to be able to get your images and make them look nice um, to begin with. Um, and then the other example is sort of an example of what I see too much. Um, you know, students, it's, it's sort of in a dim room. Uh, the it's it's the camera and the image were not lined up properly, so you get this sort of skewing effect. Like I said, you know, you see the edges of the page kind of angling from the edge of the frame. Um, so this is what you are not supposed to do. Um, there's very little um, anything that you can really do to fix this. Um, if you're a master Photoshopper, you can maybe correct the skew, but um, it's a lot of work more than you really need to, especially if you're starting with something that's good anyways. Um, so avoid this, avoid skewing your photographs like this. Always keep it perpendicular. You can see the difference of the two. One is skewed, one is not skewed. Um, but let's take a look. So obviously I'd probably use this one because it's the best. Um, but even so, let's see what we can do to make sure that it's the best quality image that we want. So I'll, I'll do this and I'll adjust the other one as well. And from here, you know, the adjustments are pretty simple. I'm in Photoshop, I'm going to go to Image, I'm going to go to Adjustments, and first I'm going to go to Levels. Now the levels will adjust your shadow, your midtone, and your highlights. And what I can do, so this is overall fairly light, so I'm going to try to increase my darks a little bit and it's going to give me a little bit more contrast, that's a bit too much, um, and a little bit more depth to the tone. And I'm kind of just going to play around with it to see what I like. Maybe a little bit darker in my mid-tones. And my highlights are already pretty bright in this, but let's pop it up a little bit more. And I'm just going to sort of play until I get, you know, a nice image that I like. So there we are, that looks kind of nice. If we want to compare it to the original one, you can always go to Window and then History, where you can kind of pop in between. So there's the original, that's with the level adjustment, so already looking brighter and um, a little bit better. Now we can also go and go back to Adjustments, Image Adjustments, and I can um, adjust the kind of hue and saturation. Uh, I like to sort of up the saturation on a lot of my images because it makes it just more colorful and bright and vibrant. You don't want to go too much because then, you know, you get that oversaturated, it looks weird. But just bump it up a little bit and again, it's going to be up to you so you get those nice, bright, vivid colors. Now, if for some reason your image is leaning toward a specific sort of color, you can adjust the hue saturation here. It can also sort of change your image colors if you want to do different colorways. Just be careful with your skin tone. So if you wanted to make sure that you're not adjusting your skin tone as well, um, you can isolate this with selection, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, when we come to sort of uh, selecting and we're, we're about there. Um, but I just want to go and sort of show you on the other image. So I up the saturation a little bit, up change the images again, and so just to show you the difference, so we started here, and we're ending here. So much nicer, much more vivid, beautiful kind of uh, color, uh, better contrast, um, just sort of optimizing my image to the best of its ability. Um, and so this would probably be good, I'd probably use this as my final version. Um, and I'm going to leave it there like that, and then I want to go back and take this one, which again is the, um, was the photographed one. Now this one is going to need a little bit more, and first I'm going to crop it down a little bit. We have a little bit of the edge of the page there, so I want to get sort of a nicer kind of cropped image of just her, so we're just working on her. I don't need all this sort of blank space, so I'm going to use the crop tool over here just to crop her down. And then I can zoom in and we get a little bit better uh, rendition. Now I'm going to go back here and go uh, do the same thing I did to the other image. I'm going to go to levels first 
And this is a little bit dimmer, so it didn't have that nice bright scan light. So I'm gonna up my highlights quite a bit. So there we are. And then I'm gonna sort of play around just like we did with the other one to sort of get the um, color tone that I want. Let's see, maybe a little bit lighter there. It's sort of a light colors, but I want those darks to pop out. So I'll up the dark and sort of play around there. All right, that looks pretty good. So, okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my saturation that I did on the other one. I'm gonna up the saturation a little bit, make it really bright and brilliant. And there we go. So again, just to show you um, how it's going, this was my original image. And through just, you know, really seconds of editing, I am ended up with this. Um, so you can see the clear difference. This is much, much better. It's much, much cleaner. So it really does pay to just spend those extra few seconds um, on editing your um, sketches just to make them look, of course, as nice as they possibly can look. Um, so just to sort of go from here, now I can decide which one I like best. Kind of like this one. This one got a little warm. Look at that. The colors. This one I think I like a little bit better now that I've edited it. Um, yeah, that one's looking a little warm and her skin has got a little warm. Um, that probably make it maybe because I saturated it too much. Let's go back and see if I can saturate it to a level where she doesn't quite look so warm. Maybe just a little bit. And then I can also... So if it is getting a little warm like that, um, just one other thing I can show you. So if we go to color balance, these are sort of the individual channels. So she's looking a little bit warm. I'm gonna move away from the red and head into the scion, te scion territory. Um, and then I can also do that moving to the blue. And now, then I'm gonna get a closer color tone than I did um, a little bit closer to this one. Still liking this one a little bit more though. Like that came out pretty well. Um, now the color, you might be, well, why is there so much difference in the color? It's all the same picture. Well, remember one I took in sunlight and one was a scam image. And if you remember what I was talking about um, with sunlight and how colors really, really love it, they cut them out more in sunlight than they do any other light. Well, that's one of the benefits of taking it in sunlight over a scan. But you know, this one's not too bad. And then of course you can always adjust. Now her skin's looking a little blue. Um, Anywho, I'll probably, I'll probably use this one. I think it is sort of best color-wise and best sort of um, all together. So now I have the finished image. What do I do? Well, what I'm gonna do is show you now how to put it onto a board. So I'm going to start with a new file. Um, and this way I can decide exactly how big it needs to be um, depending on, you know, if I'm going to be printing it out or if I'm going to be showing it on a screen or something else. And that will help you with this one. So you might want to do a couple depending on how you plan on building your portfolio. If you plan on doing like an online portfolio, you might want to do one, some for web. And then if you plan on printing these out, you could do a print here. And it will optimize um, color and also size for uh, whatever destination your sketches have. Um, mostly what's important is your print versions are going to be higher res and they're going to come in a CMYK color value because it's calibrated better to the color of a printer. Printers come in CMYK. Um, if you do for web, it's going to be slightly lower res. Um, just to make them the file sizes a bit more manageable to upload, to send in an email or whatever you're going to do with them. Um, and also the color is going to be RGB or red, green, blue. Um, and that's because screens are calibrated in RGB color, unlike printers. Um, so again, they're just calibrating whatever color mode is going to be best suited for what you're going to show it in. Um, so. You know, this is just a demo. Let's assume this is gonna go and it's it's gonna go on the web. I'm not gonna print it out. It's gonna be a um, online portfolio. So they're showing you sort of a basic, uh, most common version. 
of sort of a web image, which we can cut down from there. Uh, and again, the resolution is kind of low. Uh, and again, this is so your web pages uh, load faster. But what I'm going to recommend is you actually up it a little bit, um, just because you want your images to look a little bit nicer. So again, this is going to make a larger image file. It might create problems when you email it or things like that. But you want it to look good. <laughs> now from here I can cut, if I want to, I can crop the board, um, especially since I'm gonna probably do this in a layout where it's one singular one. And um, so there's a couple things I can do. So very basically, all I really need to do is select everything, Control A, copy, Control C, and come over here and Control V. And there I have my image. And you see, my image is very, very high res. We weren't um, zoomed in it all the way. But um, because this is so much um, of a lower resolution, it's ending up so big. So we're gonna have to go ahead and shrink it down. And I'm shrinking it down because I have this tool selected, the move tool, and this show transform controls selected. I don't know why they don't automatically select it. I really think they should. Um, but we're just going to continue sort of scaling it down till it gets to be a workable size for us. Doop -a -doop. La 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 la. Okay, that looks good. Maybe a little bit bigger. Just make a nice impact on the page. So she's going to hang out over here, and then I'm going to put everything else related to her over here. Um, so that would be swatches. Okay, now I'm ready to start finalizing my layout. I have a couple of swatches that I want to use. I have a, a heavier weight satin or a, a duchess satin for the body and this little detail here. And I have a lighter weight charmeuse uh, for the flutterier, flowier uh, dip dye here. And you see that I've chosen white. Uh, that's because I will choose my colors ba mostly based on the um, media that I have available and also what I want. Um, I don't limit myself to what I can find. You will be looking all day, um, especially because what we can do is we can put color swatches underneath uh, where it is. So let's um, go ahead and finalize my fabrics up here. So I have the images right there. I might crop this down so it's a similar size to this. Um, and I'm going to do that with my selection tool and I'm going to just select something that looks pretty close to the other one. I'll make sure I'm on the right layer so I'm copying the right things. Looks like I am, hopefully. Um, we'll find out shortly and then paste it in there and then what I'm going to do is take this original one and delete it out. And so I have two that are, you know, nicely shaped, it's nice and neat, even to fit on the page, and I'm not really missing anything. But I do want to label them. So, of course, remember, it's always important to label our fabric, um, especially when we use pictures and not swatches. Um, and even if we don't, it's good to do it anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and in here, just use my text tool. This is my silk Charmeuse, and it's 100%, I'm using 100% silk, and it's going to be kind of lightweight, so we're going to do it maybe like a, a 13 mum, mummy. If you guys want to learn more about uh, what a mummy is and silk weights, uh, please watch my series on uh, fabrics and you'll learn all about it. And that looks good for that. So let's move on to labeling this one. Oh, my Photoshop freeze. Come on, you can do it. Think about it. Okay. Alrighty. So we'll do the other one over here, and again, like I said, it is Duchess Satin. Which is a 
rather stiff satin. This is also going to be 100% silk, so it's going to be expensive dress. And this is going to be a heavier weight. Let's say it's going to be more like um, a 24 mum mummy. All right. Now we can use our move tool to move the text to make sure that they're aligned properly. So we want to make sure everything's aligned nicely, looking good. And then I got to add my flats to go down here. I have some room down here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my flats. Control A to select it all, Control C to copy, and then we're going to come over here and paste it in. And it's a little big, so we're going to shrink it down so it will fit in the allotted space. Really, I want it as big as possible so we can see all the details, but I do want to leave a little bit of breath in between all my elements. And that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop down the whole image because we have a lot of white on the side there. So let's crop it down. And there we go. And it's looking pretty good. Um, the last thing I might want to do is just to put a border on it. Um, borders are really easy and quick to add and they give a nice sort of finalized version and I'm going to do that using this um, square tool and what I'm going to do is pretty much put it all around here and I am going to do a nail fill so an invisible fill and for the stroke I'm going to use, so I, I selected some, some colors from my image previously, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but I'll just use a nice sort of dark blue, and you can pick this too. And what we're going to do is we're going to thicken up that stroke. Oh, too thick. Maybe something just like that. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, we can also make a nice little line to separate this if you want to separate it. Under here there's a line tool and let's go ahead and put in a line just to separate our elements. And we'll go to um, color, get that nice blue. And it's going to show up, gives us this one. Eh, well, good enough. Um, maybe I should have used my line tools work a little bit different in here so let's actually let's make it with a rectangle tool just make a really thin rectangle to separate our elements move it over a little bit all right looks pretty good oops okay so um, that would be my finish for one of my uh, sketches and then of course you can do it uh, for all the other ones or if you want to put all of your sketches on one page you can or all your flats on another page you can. I just like to do this, um, it's a little bit more close to sort of what we do um, in the industry. We'll usually do one uh, look uh, per board with the flats and, and the fabric next to it. Um, now the last thing that I would want to do is because I use different colors than the white, I want to put in my color swatches up here just to show the colors that I used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer um, right down here and put little swatches of my silks 
colors in here and I'll show you how I can do that. So I'm going to use that same rectangle tool and let's do a little, I have two colors that this Duchess satin came in. So I'll do one little swatch here and let's use my eyedropper tool to select the color that I used and we'll come here and see I got that little swatch there so we're going to use that so that's going to match that. Now let's um, copy it and paste it and that's simply going to be easier than making another one because it's exactly the same size and let's stack it right up there and then double click here and let's grab my eyedropper tool. Let's grab a nice little swatch there. And then that'll show up in my colors. And then there we go. We have the two colors that I used for uh, the satin. Um, now what I'm going to do is I did an ombre here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new square. Um, and apply a gradient to it. So in my swatches, um, or I'm sorry, in color, I can create a new gradient. So if we come here, sorry, um, got to remember where it is. Half the time I'm just looking for things. Double click. Do do do. If you ever can't find anything, like I'm having trouble finding the gradient right now, what you can do is in patterns. Where is my gradient? We're going to go up and go to window and try to find my gradients. There we are. Here's my gradients. And um, I can create a new gradient right here, a new gradient preset. And what I'll do is I can click from here. So this is the gradient that I use. So I can start with a nice dark color. Let's make sure I get it in a nice dark. And then up here I'm going to go with my lightest color that I used up here. So that's pretty close to the gradient that I used. So I'm going to say OK. And let's name it so I can do it. One, two, three. OK. And you can see it right in my gradient preset. So what I'll do is now create another little box right here for the silk charmeuse. And I'm going to double click here. And what I want to do is um, apply a gradient to this box. So what we'll do is, do I have to go back to gradients? Or is it in my swatches? Alright. There it is. I went back to my gradients, found a swatch, and there is my nice little gradient there. Um, that was the one I used. It wasn't just close. Yeah, I guess so. Um, because all the ones we do, let's see. Yeah, that's not it. It's this one. Um, and there we are. So, um, I can also sort of mention that this would be a sort of dip dye ombre color, uh, that I wanted to use for this, but that sort of is, to, um, told in the, in the color swatch. So, there it is. I'm ready to go ahead and export it. Um, or save it. Um, so what I would do is again, you typically don't want to save it as a Photoshop file. Once you're done, you want to save it as a JPEG. JPEGs will be easier to go ahead and um, put into other things to send. Um, it's easier for people. So if people do not have Photoshop and you save it as a Photoshop file, uh, they won't be able to open it. So then we'll just save it. And there we go. And yeah, I want it as, you know, maximum quality because, you know, so on and so forth. So there it is. Um, there's my layout. There's everything I need. Um, 
Fantastic. So what if you want to do a little bit of a background? And what if you want to do a little bit of um, coloring or prints in uh, Photoshop? Uh, because we can do that. Um, and it might be a little bit easier for you, especially if it's a very complex print, to uh, go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put a background um, if you so choose to put a background on that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of this and I'm going to start with another new file. Let's just do letter this time and you know because we're just going to focus on the image itself. So then what Okay, so I've copied my image that I want to use and it, you know, reflects the aesthetic values of my garment. So I'm going to paste it in and uh, size it. And it's going to fit better if I rotate it. So why don't I rotate it? Do, 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 do. And size it some more. it a little bit to fit but that's okay and hit enter and it will reform now it's a little dark and it's a little busy so I want my sketch to stand out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the images uh, the image levels just like we did for the actual drawing and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten it up significantly Ooh, other direction I don't want to get rid of the textures and the images, but I'm just gonna sort of soften it. So again, my picture is going to um, stand out. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to my original image, which was this one, and I'm going to select just the girl, not the white background, so she'll stand out clean. Now there's a few ways to do this, but if you have a nice solid white background, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select color range, okay? And what I'm essentially going to do is um, select all of the white. And so I click on the white with the arrow and we can see the black is what's not going to be selected and the white is what is going to be selected. Now I'm going to adjust my fuzziness range to sort of broaden out that background. Okay, now we might have to clean this up a little bit. Let's actually go a little bit less. And there we go. And you can see it, it's pretty tight, but what it did, I have a little bit of white in the eyes and in the face. So I'm gonna go up and um, in my selection, here, I'm going to subtract from the selection. Do, do, do. So subtract there, subtract around here, subtract here, so we get the eyes. Okay, so, um, and you'll play around with this to make sure that your selections are good and they are, you know, nice and clean and, and not too choppy. Um, now I also kind of want to feather it a little bit, so I'm going to add, um, and this depends on how high res it is, so this is very high res, so I'm going to do um, 10. Um, if it's still too harsh, I can go back and up it. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inverse my selection, because remember the white is selected, and I want the body to be selected. So I'm going to inverse it, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control C to copy, and that's copying just what's selected. I'm going to go over to my board here and then control paste, um, control V to paste. Um, and you can see I get that nice sort of clean selection and I can move her around if I want with my move tool, scale her, whatever, but it's, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, and I have this lovely background uh, that I can use, which kind of really adds to the, you know, design aesthetic um, of, my, of my dress. 
Um, and, you know, just makes it a little bit richer, a little bit more interesting, as you can, you know, we'll flip back to the other one, just a little bit more interesting than that flat background. So what I can actually do, so maybe I like this better, um, let's go to layers and I'm going to kind of flatten everything. And maybe I like this better, so let's select her. Something like that, if it need to be bigger, I can make a bigger uh, copy it. And then we can actually just sort of paste it in. Ooh, it's super big. Let's. Now remember, it's super big because um, our print was a lot higher resolution than this one, which was our uh, meant for the uh, internet, which is a very low resolution. So that's why it's so much bigger. And eventually we'll get to a place where it will fit. Almost, almost there, a little bit big. And we could just place her right in there. Let's bump it up. Yeah, that looks better, right? Um, of course, I have to maybe clean it up a little bit here. I can just re reapply the uh, border. Or I think, uh, which one was our border? No, nope, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. One of these was our border. Oh, was that it? Yeah. So I can just bring it to the top to make sure that it's finishing everything cleanly. So you see how it kind of just cleaned up the bottom there. Um, so yeah, that actually, that would be my finished. I think that's a little bit better than just the white background. Again, bringing the mood in, tying it can also help to sort of bring the whole collection together, um, so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, there's the finished look and again, you can do it any way you want um, and in our next video, we're going to take a look, uh, stick around with Photoshop, uh, stick around with this image and see how we can recolor in Photoshop, um, add prints um, and if you wanted to um, add an ombre instead of doing it yourself, so I did it um, you know, with actual physical media here, but if you don't want to do that, you can do your ombres, um, prints. Uh, different types of things like that in Photoshop. So I'll see you then.